Hey, what's up guys? Rob here. Welcome back to another ranking video. Hope you guys have been enjoying these. I've done quite a few of them on my channel. Friday the 13th series ranking, Halloween series ranking, and Nightmare on Elm Street series ranking. So um, I've been cranking them out. Like I said, I have a huge list here of all different kinds of series, even non-horror related like the Rocky series, um, Star Wars, you know, just different different movie series that I want to rank. Uh, there's a lot coming up. So today, I'm going to tackle the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie series. Uh, there are eight in total. And I just want to point this out. Thomas, my buddy, HorrorFan34, has just got done reviewing every single Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Definitely go check out his videos. Uh, he's an awesome reviewer. He's got a lot of knowledge when it comes to movies and horror films. So uh, if you're not subscribed to him yet, definitely go subscribe. Uh, like I said, he just got done finishing all these films. So uh, really, really awesome videos. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing here is ranking the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Just my opinions. I know some of you actually like uh, these movies that I'm going to rip into because I don't like them. And... Uh, it's, like I said, that's fine if you like them. That's fine. I'm not bashing you at all. Everyone has their own opinion. But anyway, let's get started. This is from worst to best. Um, coming in last place here, number eight, is Leatherface. I could not stand this movie. I thought this movie was dumb. Besides Lily Taylor. And I like Lily Taylor as an actress. I loved her in Ransom. She was great in The Haunting with Liam Neeson. She was great in The Conjuring. She's great in thrillers and horror films, but I don't think it was enough to save this movie. I mean, right in the beginning, you know, he gets a chainsaw for his birthday. Oh, happy birthday, here's a chainsaw, now use it. You know, why, why not, how come, you know, if we're gonna do that, why not just ha do an origin story where Freddy gets a glove? Instead of making the glove himself, why don't he just get a glove? Like from Amanda Kruger or something, like, why, why don't, you know, happy birthday, Freddy, here. Use this. Or, or how about, you know, for Jason's birthday, you know, before he drowns, why not, did, you know, Pamela Voorhees just get him, you know, he's sitting at a table all deformed and, oh, happy birthday. Here's a machete. I mean, it's it's stupid. It's really stupid, like, like all in your face. Like, like you know, Leatherface is all about the chainsaw. Let's, let's really make people believe that. Um... And they give away, I've said this before, and people don't, people don't even really get it, but they spoil Leatherface on the cover, okay? They make you think it's this other guy in the movie. They, think, they make you think it for the longest time, like throughout the whole film almost. And you're sitting there like, well, it's not him because it's, he's right here. He doesn't look anything like this other person who is much heavier. I'm just going to say, it, it's. I knew it right away, because it's right here. Anyway, I thought the movie, the movie had a couple of, like, good death scenes, so to say, but that was about it. I thought it was boring. Um, I don't know. I just, I couldn't get into it. It just wasn't my cup of tea, but there are some people who like it, and that's fine. I'm glad that you got to enjoy it. I wanted to enjoy it. I gave it a fair shot. I just didn't. All right, coming in at number seven is Texas Chainsaw 3D, the movie that is supposed to be the true sequel to the original. Um, even though the people that made this, it just seemed like they don't know math and don't know how to... They don't know how to build an accurate timeline. People are supposed to be like at least in their 40s and they look like they're fucking 20. You know, they're, they're, it, the timeline does not match up. It shows clips from the original, okay, when Sally escapes. It happens moments after the original. Sheriff comes and all of a sudden there's all these people in the house. Gunnar Hansen is one of them. Bill Mosley, which was fine. He played, you know, uh, Drayton. But there were all these people that just magically... Sh just 
try to grasp this. In the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Thomas pointed this out too, there were only uh, four people sitting at that dinner table with Sally. Okay? Hitchhiker, Leatherface, the cook, and Grandpa. That's it. Sally escapes. Hitchhiker gets run over. Leatherface goes after him. Leatherface gets injured. The cook stays behind in the house. Okay? With Grandpa. That's it. Now, mind you, their house is out in the middle of nowhere. The only closest house to the vicinity of Leatherface's house is Franklin's um, grandfather that's abandoned. It's an abandoned house. They, they, they go through it in the original. That's the only house that's near them, as far as we know. So all of a sudden, there's these other people. It's like, what did Drayton get on? Did he get on the phone and say, hey, get over here. You know, Leatherface is going crazy. Uh, the cops are going to come and we need your help, blah, blah, blah. You know, there, there's a baby involved in this. And then you have, um, oh, what's her name that played Sally in the original? She comes back to play Verna, Verna Sawyer, the grandmother in this movie. So you got the, this actress who plays two characters in the same universe. You don't do that. You do that in, in, in remakes. In remakes, you, you, you plug in an original actress to play a different character. That's what you do in a remake. You do not do that if, if this is a direct sequel and not a remake. A direct sequel, you do not have the same actress playing one person and then another person. It makes no sense. Dan Yeager, who played Leatherface, was the only good thing about this. And Alexander Daddario, who wears shirts that obviously don't fill her... You know, you know, you know she bought those shirts at, like, Baby Gap. Like, they go up to about here. And it's just enough to, to, to let it not all hang out, but it's close enough if she were to run. That's it. That was Those are the only good things about this movie. Coming in at number six is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Now, to a lot of people, this would probably be the worst on their list, but I honestly think this is a lot of fun. It's cheesy, guilty pleasure, right? Matthew McConaughey made this movie, okay? he It's, it's fun to watch him. He's got that screen presence where you just want to see more. You want to see more from him. You, you, your eyes open really big. When he's when he's on there acting crazy, not a big fan of Renee Zellweger. I've never I never have been a big fan of hers, but she was fine. I mean, you know, she was fine in this movie. She's nothing great, but that's I think literally what makes this movie enjoyable is Matthew McConaughey, hands down. <clears throat> so I don't think this movie is as bad as people say. Yeah, it's. It's cheesy fun. That's what it is. So, to me, that comes in at number six. Number five is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Now, this one is supposed to take place before the remake, okay? And they show you how the family became, you know, you know how they were in the remake. They show, you know, like the, the guy who loses his legs... Or he, he has no legs in the remake. They show you how he loses them. How Leatherface first gets the chainsaw. Um, Arlie Ermey, you know, how he becomes the sheriff. Things like that. <clears throat> I actually enjoy this movie. Uh, and a lot of people hated it because it was predictable. They pretty much knew that every single person in this was going to die. Because obviously the family hadn't been reported in the remake. You know, this family's still running around doing what they're doing in the remake. Obviously, no one would live in this. So, it was predictable in that way, but I didn't care. Honestly, I thought the characters were great. And Arlie Ermey, once again, makes this movie... I think he carried the film, but he makes it more enjoyable. I really like his presence on screen when he kills the sheriff, basically, and becomes, uh, becomes the sheriff. So the kills in this were great. I like the gore and blood and stuff. Um, yeah, it's a solid movie. And a lot of people, um, 
you know, don't like it. And, you know, whatever. That's fine. It's their opinion. But I don't think it's as bad. So that comes in at number five. Uh, coming in at number four is Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Uh, Viggo Morrison, you got uh, William Butler, Ken Forey, uh, Tom Hudson in this, and Kate Hodge. This one is really, really good. And a lot of people don't even know this movie exists because I think this is one of them that just kind of flies under the radar. I mean, either you've heard of the remake or you've heard of the original or you've heard of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 with the same director as the original or you hear of the next generation being crap or Texas Chainsaw 3D being, you know, not making sense and stuff like that. But you don't ever hear anybody talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Like I said, it's it's very, I want to say this is criminally underrated. And I wish more people would talk about this one. So, um, again, go check out Thomas's review of this movie. He hits it all, you know, he hits all the good points. And, um, yeah, really, really good one. This is, of course, the DVD, the uh, R-rated and unrated uh, version. Uh, so that's number four. Coming in at number three is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Uh, in my opinion, the true sequel to the first movie. It's very different from the first movie, and Toby Hooper knew that. He knew that he really couldn't do the first, you know, outdo the first one. He wanted to try something different. And um, the thing is, with this film, it's not meant to be taken seriously. To me, it's kind of like Evil Dead 2. Or Return of the Living Dead Part 2. That's what it kind of reminds me of. <clears throat> um, you know, Dennis, Dennis Hopper is sitting there swinging around chainsaws, you know, and fighting Leatherface. There's a, there's a cool scene with that. You know, leather, there, there's weird stuff too, you know, Chop Top, and there's um, uh, Leatherface is penetrating, you know, the girl uh, with, with the chainsaw. Um, but yeah, this movie. This movie is good. I just think it's really good. It's it's. I don't know why people really have a problem with it, but um, I don't know. I would say, in a way, that that movie is also underrated, but not not as underrated as Part Three. That's for sure. Coming in at number two is just. It's an awesome movie, and oh, I just I love it so much. And it is. The remake. Uh, but you got Jessica Biel, Jonathan Tucker, uh, Eric Balfour, Arlie Ermey, Steve De uh, Jablonski did the music, and uh, Steve Jablonski does a lot of stuff for Michael Bay. He did the music for the Transformers films, and uh, uh, this was also Platinum Dunes, because, you know, with Platinum Dunes, you got Michael Bay, uh, Andrew Foreman, Brad Fuller, who all work, uh, you know, on that, on movies from that company. And, and half of the time they do a good job, uh, but this was definitely one of their best. Like I just, I, this movie's so good. It, it stays different, but yet it pokes little, you know, um, it pokes like little, um, I want to say it throws in some similarities, uh, from the original movie and you notice it but it doesn't it just it just does that it doesn't go farther with it it just it just gives you a little bit and then it stays true to um what they're what the story's what they're going for in the story like it, it's it's that different and that's what i like about it um you can pay all much to the original if you want but i mean i like how they went different with a lot of things so um yeah this movie definitely one of my favorite remakes um, horror remakes of all time. So that comes in at number two. And of course, you probably already know number one is the original 1974 classic. I can watch this over and over and over and over and over again and not get tired of it. Um, I'll go with you, Sally. I'll go with you. Well, there's a little path in between those two old sheds. I don't think I'm going to be able to take it. <laughs> You ever been by the slaughterhouse? <laughs> Do 
you really think that guy wanted to hurt himself? I mean, it takes something, you know, just, just, ugh. <laughs> I have this knife. You pay me. It's a good picture. They make head cheese. And they boil it. They, they, don't, they don't throw away nothing. They take, they have the eyes and the ligaments and everything. Man, it, this movie, there, there's a lot of creepy, weird imagery and cinematography. Um, but one of my favorite parts, uh, you know, in horror, there are moments that you never forget. And this is definitely one of them where Leatherface shows up for the very first time. Uh, hits the guy over the head with a hammer. The guy's twitching. Drags him. He drags him behind this door and he just... He shuts this, like, metal, it's, it's like a, I don't know, it's like an aluminum door or whatever. He shuts it, and in, in the background, there's, like, this red wall with skulls on it. And he just shuts it really fast, and, and then it's just quiet. But that's, like, one of my favorite scenes. I remember watching it for the first time being, like, Like that. Like, honestly, that was awesome. And this movie is not bloody. It is not bloody at all. It just, you hear things. Visually, you see Leatherface with a chainsaw trying to cut something, but they don't focus in on it. And I think hearing the screams of people, hearing the sounds, is what makes the movie work. And, like you know, this movie proves that you don't need to show someone getting cut in half or or over the top gory. Even though I like that stuff, you don't need to do it. And the, yeah, like I said, this is the prime example right here. Um, yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite horror films of all time. My favorite horror film of all time is Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. And this is uh, not far from it. So the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is my favorite. All right, uh, quick recap. So we got number eight is Leatherface. Number seven is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, or Texas Chainsaw 3D. Number six is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Number five is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Number four is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, or Leatherface. Um, number three is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Um, number two is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake. Number one is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. So, yeah, um, I wish this was a series where I could say that I like every single movie, no matter if I rank it, uh, you know, my least favorite or the worst. Uh, I can't really say that. Like I said, I, don't, I just don't like some of them. But, uh, it's, other than that... It's got some solid flicks. It really does. I do like uh, a lot of the sequels. So, anyway, guys, uh, what do you think of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films? Let me know your ranking in the description or make a video response if you want. Uh, I'm going to have uh, a lot more of these videos coming up, so I hope you guys stay tuned. As well as other ones, I actually have some top tens. Uh, really quick, I'll name them. Um, coming up, I have my top ten TV shows which are the live action sitcoms. And then I also have my top 10 favorite cartoon shows, uh, which are, you know, from the 80s, 90s, and so on. Uh, you know, like the He-Man cartoon and, um, you know, G.I. Joe and, you know, things like that. So that's going to be kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, hope you guys are enjoying these ranking videos and um, stay tuned for more. It's Rob signing off. And I'll see you guys next one.